welcome everybody to the TRI Alliance training. Today is a short course, uh, five tips for using social media to engage customers. Our presenter is Reagan Campbell. She's the founder and CEO of the business side of things. That's her business, but she is TRI's support when it comes to our Instagram and Facebook pages and a lot of our internal communications. My name is John Jensen. I'm a roofing contractor in Seattle, Washington, but also uh, manage the training program for the Tau Roofing Industry Alliance. Lisa will be monitoring today so that you'll be able to ask questions uh, through the question feature. And toward the end of the broadcast, we will open it up to audio questions. And, uh, and Reagan will be taking over shortly. But I want to tell you a little bit about the Tau Roofing Industry Alliance. Um, we are a manufacturer's organization primarily. So the producing members are clay and concrete tile roofing manufacturers. And they're the foundation of our industry. But in addition, and we've even had a recent name change from the Tile Roofing Institute, which sounds a little stodgy to the Tile Roofing Industry Alliance. And what that means is that being such a small part of the roofing industry overall, we really need to depend on expertise and information and uh, uh, experience from other parts of our industry. So contractors, manufacturers, suppliers, roof consultants, uh, really play a big role in that, and we rely on them. You can go to the Tile Roofing Industry Alliance website at tileroofing.org and check it out. Um, you'll see that we have a find a contractor, find a supplier, find a consultant search on there. The way that you get onto that search is by taking one of our manual certification courses. Tile Roofing Industry Alliance has three manuals, a regular manual, a Florida high wind manual that is only relevant for Florida, and then we also have a cold and snow manual that is a, an add-on or it builds upon both of those two foundational installation manuals. The certifications come in the regular manual certification and the Florida high wind certification classes. In addition, we have the training like you're here for today, the short courses, where we bring in an expert like Reagan uh, or maybe someone with particular expertise in material production or installation, and they spend time just on that, that trait that they have. Uh, so you can see we're here today on April 16th. We've got a couple of the manual certifications on the calendar, and we'll be adding uh, manual certifications for each month in each manual. In addition, we have two short courses per month, and we've got a couple of good ones ready to go for May. And next week, those will be up on the calendar. So who's with us here today? Um, we're across the country, mostly the bottom part of the country, but uh, we've got CMR. Uh, down in Florida. They probably sent more people to our classes than maybe anybody, but certainly in Florida. Transparent Roofing is in the Tampa Bay area. Up Top Roofing and Constructions out of Richmond, Texas. Uh, welcome Nate Miller out of Kansas City, uh, Kansas City Roofscapes. Um, in Arizona, we've got Caliber Roofing, uh, Brady from Renco Roofing in Phoenix, uh, David from the ROC. I'm not sure if David got on. Uh, just so you guys know that the ROC is like the police force for contractors in Arizona and about 20 of their people have been through our class. So they've got a good knowledge of the foundation of the installation in Arizona. Uh, in San Diego, Amanda from Howard and Sons is on. And then a couple of our towel producing members, uh, Wade Shepard in Laguna Niguel uh, with Boral Roofing Products. Mark Lowry, welcome Mark, uh, with Eagle Roofing Products up in the Bay Area. And then Lisa and I are up in Southern Idaho. Uh, in addition, we've got a Canadian member uh, from up in Saskatchewan, Brendan, with Beef Level uh, Roofing is on. So with that, uh, Reagan is in Los Angeles, and I will turn it over to Reagan to cover five tips for using social media to engage customers. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, like John mentioned, my name is Reagan, and I'm the founder of the business side of things, which is a digital marketing agency, and we'll dive into that in a moment, but I'm really excited to talk about social media today. Um, we're going to be emphasizing Instagram in particular, since this is kind of the, um, the dominizer, if you will, in the industry. We'll get started by introducing myself a little bit further. So like I mentioned, my name is Reagan. I am a social media expert and I kind of fell into this role um, by accident. I started out my career working in medical sales and technology sales and kind of found that it wasn't truly my passion. Um, and I was really, you know, diving deeply into the digital space and I 
you know, by, by nature, I'm a millennial, I was raised in the digital age, so I felt like it was something that was second nature to me. Um, like John mentioned, I'm currently based in Los Angeles, California, and my degree is in business management and communications, so I kind of have a little bit of that background. And I started my company in the beginning of the pandemic in January of 2020, so it's been a little bit of a wild ride the past 15 months or so. I'm excited to share with you guys everything that I've learned. A little bit about um, the business side of things, my company is that I typically service individuals and small to medium sized businesses nationwide. However, in the past six months or so, I've started to also engage influencers and do a lot of affiliate marketing with some of those small to medium sized businesses that I work with. And I think um, something that maybe we'll discuss today is the um, common misconception that maybe influencers or people doing big things on the internet are not for, for you or your industry. And I I'm hoping to change your mind and kind of talk about some of the ways that we can engage customers in, in, in a new way. Um, my whole goal of my company is to help people elevate their digital presence through social media, email marketing, influencer outreach, and different campaigns. Um, and honestly, even over the past year and a half, that has shifted so much. So it's a constantly shifting and evolving space. And um, that leads me to my first question of why social media? And I think um, we're all aware social media is a big player in marketing these days, if not um, the biggest player. So I'm going to be talking about uh, five different ways that you can engage different, uh, tap into maybe different audiences, demographics, use, utilizing a lot of the features that are offered on Instagram. But keep in mind, while I talk about Instagram primarily today, uh, a lot of these uh, methods and tips and tricks and hacks that I talk about can be applied across all platforms, but I figured for um, consistency purposes and just to make it easier for one big takeaway that we can primarily touch on Instagram. So we're going to be talking about five different um, five different ways, I guess, of how we're going to engage customers. And I broke it down into value proposition, um, which we'll talk about how that applies to social media the four E's of the social media post, content pillars, posting and ghosting, and engaging and repeat. Um, I believe you can send your questions to Lisa as I'm going through, and then I'm happy to answer any questions you might have at the end as we go through uh, the presentation. So we'll start out with value proposition. Um, something I like to remind my clients or anybody looking to engage people on social media is Put yourself in the user's shoes. Within 10 seconds of someone landing on a social media page, we maybe subconsciously ask ourselves, what's in it for me? Um, as a millennial, I know I can speak to um, constantly looking for businesses online, um, whether that's where I'm going to dinner this weekend, maybe a fun activity I'm going to check out with a friend. I, I want to know within the first couple seconds, the um, I, I'm going to use the word vibe. I want to know the vibe, the atmosphere. I want to know what this business is about. Um, what, what do they stand for? How is it? What is in it for me? Um, so I always challenge anybody looking to elevate their social media presence to kind of look at their their page through the lens of what's in it for the user. Why do they want to be here? Um, that perfectly segues into the second question, why am I here and why should I stay? So I think one of the most common uh, mistakes of social media is people show up. Let's say we're talking about the tile roofing industry today. So they show up on Instagram, they post a lot of pictures of beautiful roofs and their, their hard work and you know they post pictures at the job site, but maybe there's there's no value there for your audience. It might be an awesome roof for you, but they don't know how long that took or how they're able to get their hands on it. Or um, is it accessible to, for them? Can they afford it? Um, who, you know, how is it made? There's so many things that go under the surface. And I think um, that's where where we're going with the value proposition. So um, aside from the 10 second evaluation, which is what I recommend anybody to do, is always ask for feedback on your social media page. Ask people in 10 seconds. What did they get from your page? Just by a quick, quick glance. Typically, I find most people make an assessment of a page within three to five seconds, but 10 seconds will do. Um, we'll dive into the importance of the profile photo and bio biography, which is going to be the short uh, kind of caption underneath your profile photo. And then the, uh, the last six images that you posted and how important those are. So on my next slide, I gave some examples of businesses that I thought do a really good job of breaking down uh, a value proposition within their profile photo and their bio. So on the left, we have 
a carpentry construction company. Looks like they're based in Australia. So right off the bat, uh, this was my that was my three second evaluation. I saw they were in the construction industry. I saw the Australian flag, so I knew they were in Australia. So immediately I know, well, there's not a lot in it for me because I'm based in the US, but let's say I do live in Australia. Told me he's a professional, I'm assuming it's a he, a professional carpenter who's born to build and he's sharing all aspects of carpentry. Okay, great. So within looking at this, I feel like I have a really good sense of what this page is about um, and what they're offering and what's in it for me. And I'm able to make that assessment. So this is a really good example of uh, what, what a value proposition uh, might look like on a social media page. Next, we have one of my favorite restaurants here in Los Angeles, Harriet's Rooftop, where they give that immediate uh, grab, which is the revelry with remarkable view. I'm instantly drawn in. I want to know what that remarkable view looks like. I want to scroll through their photos. I want to know what they're offering. Then they tell me exactly what it is. It's a rooftop lounge and restaurant. And then they give the obvious information of, of their hours and business info. For a roofing company that might, or a um, any anybody in the construction industry that might be build, building credibility through the year you were established, maybe a, an award-winning project you worked on, um, anything that you can do to to build um, and establish that credibility will definitely draw in your audience. So that leads me to the next point of the four E's of posting. Um, not only is the first glance important, but like you had just witnessed by me reading some of those bios, I wanna learn more. So I might turn to the first couple of posts that I see when checking out someone's Instagram page, Facebook page, maybe Twitter, I'm looking at their first few tweets. Um, and I like to break it down into the four E's. So when making a social media post, I typically will ask myself or challenge my clients to ask themselves, is this post checking off one of the four E's? Is it engaging? Is it entertaining? Is it empowering? Does it educate my audience? An example of a post um, that may go wrong, I, tip, I always use this example because it's easy to understand. So let's say it's Valentine's Day and we post a photo of a calendar with uh, February 14th circled. You might think, well, it's Valentine's Day. I'm, I'm posting a relevant you know, post. I'm wishing people a happy Valentine's Day. But is it checking off any of these four boxes? Is it engaging my audience? There's not really any reason for them to engage on a picture of a calendar with you know, Valentine's Day circled. It's not entertaining them really in any way. It's not empowering them, it's not educating them. So how can we take that a step further? So a good example of this um, is one of, I'll use an example from the TRI uh, page that I run on Instagram. It was St. Patrick's Day, so I could have just posted Happy St. Patrick's Day, you know, a nice little graphic uh, with our font and logo and, and posted it. But instead, I tried to think out of the box and I chose a photo of a roof that had a really unique green roof tile. And I tagged the uh, company, I think it was Luisi, that uh, did this roof, was responsible for the job. And tagged them below. I got people engaging in the comments on what they thought of this roof uh, and, and whatnot. So just kind of thinking out of the box as to how you can check off one of those boxes. So we'll dive into each one of these four a little bit further just to give uh, more clarification and some examples for you if this is something new for you. So an example of engaging your audience on a post can look a little different. It can have a call to action. It can pose a question. Uh, a question might be, as simple as, what do you think of this roof? Would you would you put this roof on your house? Or um, what, you know, uh, I'm just ways to get them to comment, like, or share with a friend. So kind of reverse thinking, um, like I had mentioned in the beginning. Ask them to respond in the comments, maybe with an emoji, tag a friend, um, tell them to double tap, ask them to follow along for more, or ask them to provide feedback. Um, I think a lot of people forget how simple it is to ask for engagement. Um, doesn't have to mean that you're begging people to follow you or begging them to engage, but if you give a simple prompt, uh, most of the time you'll be surprised that people truly engage. So I gave this example of this post on the left, which is seemingly maybe to most of a boring uh, photo of a fence. It looks like gorilla fence, they're based in Georgia. Um, and again, just, just um, for context, I pulled random photos off the internet so we could work through them together during this presentation. So. They wrote in their caption that this is a six foot fence, capped, privy, Hampton flat, post caps. I'm already lost within the first couple of seconds of this caption. But I do see that they're mentioning you can reach out to their customer service for a free estimate, call now. So they did check off that call to action with the call now, but there was really no um, 
no reason for me to engage with this photo. I'm, I'm still a little unsure other than knowing it's a six foot fence. I'm not sure. Is this their product? Is this, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure how it applies to me. So I might just keep scrolling and move on. So I encourage you um, to kind of look at these examples and try to change up your post to make them fit within those categories. An example of entertaining your audience doesn't have to be, um, so it, it could be literal or it could be a little out of the box. So entertaining your audience, we know that video content performs 82% better than a static post. Um, that, that was a recent statistic in 2020. So I always recommend long form videos for educational purposes or entertaining purposes are excellent or a short form video. Um, a short form video for entertaining might be a day in the life of one of your employees, a day in the life as a contractor, uh, how to install one tile on the roof. Um, it can be really simple, but entertaining for your audience. And at the end of the day, the longer they spend looking at your post, the uh, higher your page is going to rank and your posts are going to perform. Um, I gave an example here of a carousel slash slideshow post. What that's going to mean is down here at the bottom of this picture, we see all those little dots, uh, the white dots. That just means that we can swipe through these photos. Um, and I believe this architectural page was showing kind of the series of this project and its development of being um, built. And to me, that's an entertaining post. It's keeping me there longer. It's showing me something start to finish. Um, and at the end of the day, it's entertaining me. A GIF or a boomerang, um, this is going to be just a quick a uh, quick shot that's like three seconds, but again, it's something different than a static image. It's going to change things up a bit and, and entertain the audience. I had mentioned before some ideas for video content. Um, a great idea is behind the scenes. So like I said, a day in the life, maybe a, a video from the plant, um, production belt, whatever it might be, but people love, people are nosy. They like to see behind the scenes. They like to see how things are made. Um, and I think when they feel more connected to the actual process of a product being made, they're more likely to purchase. So in this picture, like I mentioned, it's a swipe through carousel. Immediately the photo is really beautiful. It engaged me, it's entertaining just because it's something different. Um, and that's that. So we'll move on to empower. Empowering your audience sounds a little bit uh, daunting, at least for me. So some examples that I gave is uh, ask yourself, why would someone want to send this to a friend? How can I make this either uh, funny, motivational, uh, aspirational, something that someone wants to look at and say, wow, I'm going to send this to my best friend. So I think a really good example of that is this photo down on the um, the left with the blue cabinets it said they can't believe it's been a year since they transformed their kitchen the third photo was the before and now this is the after it's custom cabinetry they they gave further detail as to what they use for the backsplash and to me this is really aspirational they showed me before and after um, that they were able to transform i feel empowered i want to send this to my friend i want my kitchen to transform like this so to me that's an empowering post uh, maybe you can share a motivational quote that pertains to your industry or maybe industry news, um, maybe jobs available. Um, promoting a course that they can take to better themselves would be an empowering post or sharing an educational resource tool or maybe a win and fail that one of your employees had or that your business had as a whole. Um, we can see on the top post someone had commented. This was a video of someone uh, laying some sort of, uh, I don't know, liquid down on a, on a wood floor, but it was really fascinating video. Um, and it was, it was them showing how simple it was to transform your home. And you can see um, one of the first comments is, wow, this is so nice to see. So that's the end goal here is to get people to engage in your content and hopefully share with others. So we'll end with um, educating. So educating uh, people through a post I love this infographic post. Immediately, it drew my eye in. It's something different. It's not just a static image of a roof or a beautiful house that might that I might think I can't afford. It's something that is teaching me something. And even as someone who maybe isn't in the roofing industry, I, I am intrigued because I I didn't know that was called a cricket. I, I didn't know that this was good and that was bad. So I think a graphic like this is something uh, really useful as a tool. Um, some other examples of how you could educate your audience is providing industry specific information, differentiating um, your business from others, 
providing value as to why they should buy your services over someone else's or your product, um, testimonials to build credibility, or sharing industry company news to educate them further um, about your specific business, and then maybe a day in the life of the employee or founder. Now, this could go under multiple different categories, but I think educating your audience on what uh, your business looks like uh, on a day-to-day -day will help them connect further and hopefully create that buy-in for them to uh, turn into a customer from social media. So we'll move into my third um, component of elevating your social media presence and engaging customers, which is content pillars. And this is arguably one of the most uh, crucial parts of your social media, and it is also one of the more uh, ever-changing and evolving parts. So a content pillar, how I explain this, is creating a golden thread within all of your content. Um, every good social media page has three to five things that people come to their page for. So I'm gonna give an example that's a little bit outside of this industry, but maybe relate to some uh, of you that might be on social media. So an example I always give is I follow a lot of home decor accounts. I do not own a home. I live in a very small Los Angeles apartment, um, but I follow these home decor accounts, not because I'm going to be painting, you know, my beautiful kitchen like theirs, or decorating my a, a kid's bedroom that I don't have, it's because I'm really connecting with some of the other content that they're sharing, which might be family related content, it might be, um, I don't know, shopping hauls, whatever it might be, but it's that I'm buying into the overall uh, brand that they're sharing with me. And this is how I encourage you to engage new customers is through your content pillars. So I know it's a little confusing, so I'll break it down a little bit further. Um, what this might look like for the construction or roofing industry is some of those things I had mentioned before, adding that human element into your content. Uh, people connect with people, as we know, and I think that one of the um, components that a lot of social media pages are lacking is sharing the people behind your business. It's free. You, they already work for you. You pay them every day. So why not take advantage of uh, the hard work that they're doing? And people love sharing that and people feel really excited. Um, so often with my clients, I encourage them to uh, invite their employees if people feel passionate about a project they just completed or maybe they're they're you know working on a goal for a, a quarter or um, maybe they're working on a project that just seems really awesome and they want to talk about it encourage them to take a couple quick videos show the behind the scenes ask them to write down the five steps they took to meet that that goal um, and people really enjoy learning about that and it, it, it shows just the humans behind the work that you're doing and I find people uh, get a lot of success. So back to content pillars, uh, five things that are broad enough to choose topics within that category every time you post. So what this might look like is uh, employees might be a content pillar for you. Um, recent projects might be a content pillar. Maybe uh, your you could do inspiration posts, inspiration roof. Uh, all, it can break in, you see kind of where I'm going here, is basically breaking down your content into five different categories. That way, every time you make a post, you can say, okay, I haven't spotlighted an employee in a while. I haven't spotlighted um, this, this content pillar in a while. Basically, just gives you five golden threads to pick from. Oh, I forgot that I gave examples here. So this is gonna break it down a little easier. So maybe you're a roofing contractor. You could do installation tips and tricks. You could do a day in the life. You do roofing trends or industry trends, roof tile education, and your favorite roof series. So these are five things that you can constantly revisit in your content. And then the reason I, I love content pillars so much is that maybe after three to six months of implementing these content pillars, you can go back and assess your content and say, wow, um, people really didn't seem to engage with my roofing trends posts. Maybe I should switch up my third content pillar for the you know quarter three so that uh, I can see if I'm boosting engagement if I switch that up. So to me, it just kind of hones in on everything you're doing for your social media and allows your audience to kind of tell you what they like and what they don't like. Um, an example for a roof tile manufacturer might be how it's made, employee spotlight, company news, industry updates, or product education. So this leads me into kind of a general tip that I like to give everyone who is posting on social media. I think there's so many boxes to check when running uh, digital marketing and social media pages that people often uh, post and ghost is one of my favorite ways to describe it. So uh, Instagram or social media in general is a community. Uh, it's 
it, whether you like it or not, this is where people are going to engage. They're going to chat. They're going to find out about new things. Um, and I always like to remind people that you get what you give. So if you're going on Instagram every single day and you're putting up a post and you're spending five to 10 minutes putting that post up and then you're exiting the app and never revisiting until the next day when you decide to post again, you can't expect that you are going to have a million likes and a million new followers and you wake up the next morning to see how you're posted. If you are not engaging with your community, you can't expect that they're gonna engage back with you. And I know this seems like it might be adding another thing to your plate, but I always remind people, um, it's like showing up to a room of people networking and passing out your business card to everyone and, and walking away and hoping that people call you, but you didn't talk to them in the process. You didn't get to know them. You didn't see why they'd be a good fit. You didn't ask them uh, what they're there to network for. And uh, so anyways, this is a, a parallel to give you as to um, social media and why it's so important to put in what you want. Um, an important point is that you are ranked on most social media platforms based on your activity and how much you are engaging as a user as well as uh, how much people are engaging with you. So gaining engagement is just as important as giving engagement. Um, utilizing all of the features that are available on social media platforms, specifically Instagram, for example, um, like stories, reels, IGTV, um, and if all of this is seeming a little daunting or over your head if you're not super uh, deep into this space, essentially what I'm saying is just try all of the things. Try all of the things that are available and see what works and what doesn't. This is gonna lead me into my last point, um, piggybacks off of posting and ghosting, which is engaging and repeating. So I explain this as the modern day field marketing. Some examples of engaging and then repeating might be utilizing local hashtags to find new customers and engage with people that are in your area. So let's say um, you are Los Angeles rooftop manufacturer. Maybe you're going to check. Uh, maybe there's a new neighborhood going up and it's in West Hollywood. So maybe you're going to check the West Hollywood hashtags, see who's engaging on some of the posts, who's visiting some of the local businesses, who seems like your target demographic, and start to engage with those people. So once you do this a couple times, you get into a flow and kind of find um, find people who will be interested in your content. It might take a few weeks to, to figure that out. Um, but I highly, highly recommend hashtags are your gateway to finding the people that you want to follow you and engage with your content. Uh, target your competitors' followers. This is no different than old school marketing um, and maybe, you know, sending mailers to your competitors, um, audience, whatever that might be. This is the modern day version of that. So targeting your competitors' followers might mean going to a competitor's page. If you see someone is repeatedly engaging with their content, maybe click on their profile, send them a quick message, introduce them to your brand, uh, maybe like a couple of their photos, tell them why, you know, what value you have to bring to them. And, and if they engage and follow with you, great. Um, but if not, the worst that you did is, is got your name out there. It was free marketing and you got in front of your target audience. Um, my third point is searching top posts underneath your niche for inspiration. Um, what this might mean is you go under a hashtag, uh, maybe hashtag roofing contractor. Maybe there's someone who's doing a really great job of engaging a lot of people that you're looking uh, in your same uh, demographic. So maybe you're gonna go under that hashtag um, and just see what is this person posting? Um, how can I repeat what they're doing? It doesn't mean that you're gonna copy, but maybe something's really working for them. People are really resonating with the industry news uh, content pillar that they're sharing. Um, so you can kind of gauge if, if you're completely lost uh, by tech checking the top posts underneath your specific niche. My fourth point is following and engaging with your target demographic. This goes back to kind of checking those local hashtags, targeting your competitors, um, and, and truly putting in what you want out of it. So if you really want those followers, really want to gain exposure, um, do the same and you'll see it in return. And my last point that I'll leave you with is utilize direct messaging to get in front of your target demographic. I briefly touched on this before, but I truly believe that direct messaging is such a great way to reach uh, new people. Some examples that I've seen recently and that I've received, um, let's say this is a great one. Um, I moved to this area 
in West Hollywood, California about six months ago, and I started to get a lot of direct messages from some of the local businesses that were struggling, I think, during the pandemic around here. So there's a donut shop down the street that saw I was tagging West Hollywood in my location on my posts frequently. So they sent me a direct message, said, hey, we see you're new to the area. Use this code for a free donut on us. We'd love to see you in our shop. This immediately sent me to the donut shop because I thought it was really cool that they recognized I was in the area. They wanted to welcome me to the neighborhood and they wanted me to stop in for a free donut. And you better believe that when I stopped in, I told them that was really cool that you, you posted on Instagram and here I am and now I'm a customer. Um, I'm not saying this is gonna be exactly how it works out for you, but it's just a prime example of uh, the worst that can happen is they don't respond. So I highly recommend uh, utilizing direct messaging as a way to get directly in front of your target demographic. Some examples of what that hashtag research might look like is maybe going under the hashtag new homeowner. You can go uh, directly from the Instagram app and go to the uh, magnifying glass, which is gonna be the second icon from the left, search the relevant hashtags and scroll through some of those posts and, um, and find some, some people who are new homeowners there that might be in need of a new roof and simply comment something like, hey, beautiful home, I see you're in the process of renovating. If you ever need a new roof, check out our page or give us a follow. We'd love to help you out. So that is uh, my very quick <laughs> um, presentation on five ways to engage um, new audiences through social media. I'd love to answer any questions you might have. Um, I know Lisa's going to put up my information, but um, I think we'll open it up the floor for questions now. Thanks so much for having me today. Thanks a lot, Reagan. That's awesome. Um, Lisa, are there any questions online right now? If not, looking right now. Okay. Not seeing it. And so I'm going to put a couple forward. I know that we've got, uh, I know that we have some marketing folks online also, but I have one question. You, you uh, touched me with the donut uh, business and it reminded me of how different sometimes roofing is from other businesses. You know, for example, donuts or pizza, you know, maybe a post at four o'clock saying we've got a special is going to draw me in there. But our pages for our, our contracting companies often are, I won't say static, but our our audience, our target audience are not people that we're gonna have become fans for life, right? They're, they're somebody that goes, gosh, we need a roof. They go into an in-depth shopping and learning about roofing for a month or two. Is there any way that you would set up a page so that those people that come by and, and drop in and in a, in a rotating way, new customers who go through the process, is there anything we would do to deal with, with that type of customer? Sure. So I think um, this is where those content pillars become really important. So I think how how to keep that person engaged long term, uh, maybe they purchase their roof, they're a happy customer and there's really no need for them to be there anymore. I think kind of shifting the narrative to how can I educate them on maintaining their roof? How can I continue to educate them on the benefits of the roof that they just purchased? Um, what's something new that's trending in, in the industry that might interest this person? Um, maybe it's something that's not directly correlated to roofing, but maybe it's it's some new law that was just passed that might be uh, relevant for a homeowner. Um, I think kind of thinking outside the box definitely is important, um, especially for this kind of unique uh, customer that we're talking about, because it's not as uh, the, the barrier to entry for a donut. You're right. It's a lot, a lot less than a, an expensive purchase of a roof. So I think uh, it's really critical that you share long term uh, information that's going to but really hone in on the education portion, um, constantly educating your audience, because I, I truly believe if you're educating them, um, they're going to want to stick around. For, for a lot longer. Okay, that's great. And we've got one question. It looks like Amanda was unmuting herself. So Amanda, if you want to ask a question, go ahead. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that was an accident. Uh, I didn't mean to unmute myself. Oh, okay. I apologize. No, no problem. problem. Well, Reagan, is there anything else you'd like to add or? Uh... I know I went through that a little quickly, um, but I, I just can't stress enough. I think um, constantly evolving, changing up what you're doing is so crucial and really reading the room um, just like you would in person um, is so important. Just kind of shifting that mindset to doing it digitally is, is so important. And the beautiful thing of doing it digitally is that there's so many insights, um, things that you can track, whether that's likes, um, 
comments or people saving your post or sending it to friends. Um, all of that information is available these days, so it's it's pretty easy to assess and see what's working and what's not. Um, and yeah, I think if you have any questions about maybe ideas, I'm, I'm definitely a springboard. I have lots of ideas all the time if anybody uh, needs help getting started. Okay, great. And and Brady, if you're on still, it looks like you are. If you would unmute yourself, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, Brady's the marketing director for Renco Roofing in Phoenix, and you guys have been doing some great videos lately. They're short, they're to the point, and I just wanted to see if you had anything to say about your strategy there. Oh, uh, he's, he's not unmuting, so he may not be able to he may not be able to hear me. But uh, but yeah, that's just oh, Brady, are you there? Yeah, so we we just actually um, changed our process uh, and, and revamped things around here. So one of the things that I did, and it's kind of interesting that that Reagan put that on there, was the content pillars. Uh, that was one of the first things that I I went through our social media and put together some content pillars that we could use, so we don't have the same boring. Um, you know, post day after day, week after week. It's actually engaging with, you know, what are some roof issues we're seeing out there? What are some roofs we're working on? Who are the people in our company? Um, and then just giving a, you know, a video here and there. It's kind of expensive to get, you know, video constantly, but um, if we can, you know, do a video of a job periodically, I think it's definitely going to help bring visibility. Okay, that's great. Thank you. And and uh, Reagan, if you have any comment, please go ahead. Yeah, I took a, a look while you were chatting, and I think you really hit the nail on the head with the content pillars. I can immediately see um, you have your testimonials there. Um, you have educational content. I'm just going to read it out loud for anybody who's not looking. It's signs of roof wear that you should know about, um, the best ways to avoid commercial roof problems. So you have a lot of educational content, um, a lot for me to engage on. So I think you really you really did a great job. You should have given the presentation. This is an excellent um, display of what I was talking about. And I want to talk really quickly on the, the video portion. Um, what we're finding with the um, skyrocketing use of TikTok and some of these video platforms is that doesn't have to be fancy. Um, I think we all have iPhones. We're all carrying around cameras all day long. And I think while those beautiful drone shot videos are, are wonderful and um, do provide excellent value on social media pages, I think people, people appreciate and understand um, when it's a quick video shot with an iPhone, as long as it's checking off one of those boxes, it's other you know, maybe you have a really funny employee who, you know, can give a couple jokes while up on the roof and also providing value and educating the audience. Um, people really love that. So I think um, if you where you can sprinkling in that video content, like I said, it, it people truly engage with videos much more than they do with static posts. Um, so I think that that's a great point to bring up. Thanks, Regan. And I'll point out something, too, and I'm I'm learning and I'm learning from you also. but. One of the things I know is, is the TRI, we have uh, two different Facebook pages now. So for those of you that may not be aware of that, uh, the training page, which I manage, um, is really dialed into our, our installers, our contractors. We're talking about industry things. You know, the, the training page is not necessarily where we think we want the next consumer of a tile roof, you know, somebody hungry to get that beautiful looking roof. And then we're gonna show them a picture of a, of a crummy plugged up valley, you know. But our roofers really do, gain a benefit from seeing that. And I think Reagan's developing the, the Tile Roofing Industry Alliance page, a separate page, into the type of page where we would expect that customer to go. Customer to go. I hope we keep you know both in a way that they represent a, a positive image for the industry. But you know we show a lot of things on the, on the training page that just wouldn't be out there to try to sell a tile roof, they're to try to help and support our installers to do better. Um, but uh, you know for the roofing companies, I guess they're always, you know, looking at selling maybe to people they would hire, also to people they might sell a roof to. Um, so I guess that's a little different. Well, I guess uh, I don't see any other questions. So if nobody has one, you, you will have uh, Reagan's contact information is up there, along with Lisa and mine and, and Rick Olson's. Again, we're a small industry, so we really rely on each other. If you've got ideas or you want to ask direct questions, make suggestions, we're always open to it. So 
Uh, you can take a screenshot of that or you can go to the website at tileroofing.org and all of our contact information is there also. Reagan, thank you very much for today. Brady, thanks for letting me put you on the spot. And uh, we really appreciate your uh, your input, Reagan. Absolutely, this is so much fun. Um, love talking about social media and it's always changing. So maybe a year from now when things have completely changed again, we can, we can give this another whirl. All right. Well, everybody have a great day and have a great weekend and we will see you uh, at the next short. Thank you.